What's up you guys? It's Jaden here. Welcome to the Moonlight Craftsman channel. Today we're going to make a hammered copper lid for this box. Coming up. So what I'm doing right here is measuring my box and going to look at my material and try and figure out what size of lid I want to make. Uh, turns out later you'll see that I made it a little bit too sloppy. I planned on an eighth inch all the way around and that is a little bit too much. So I'm going to grab a pen and mark my piece. Double check in the box one more time. And checking the offset from my blade to the edge so I can properly set up my straight edge guide. So I've got my blank out for the lid right now and this is half hard material so what I'm doing here is taking the torch and I need to anneal it to soften it up to make the hammering easier. That color right there is what you're looking for and when it gets to that color you know that it's been annealed and you can go ahead and soak it straight in water and it won't harden it or anything. And so now I'm going to go ahead and start hammering over an anvil uh, to get the hammer marks. I want to leave as much, as little space in between the metal and the anvil as possible. Uh, it will make it curl up and so you want to flip the material back over every now and then and hit it with a mallet or the flat face of the metal hammer. And just work your way all the way to the other edge of the metal and make sure there's a dimple everywhere flatten it out right now and here in a bit i'm going to check my measurement and it will actually grow a little bit after you hammer it and it will be fairly hard at this point or at least back to the half hardness uh, which we started with earlier after measuring my blank out, I'm going to set my scratch gauge to mark the corners and then I will notch them with just a regular cutoff wheel to get it ready to be bent. Right here I'm going to remove some of the dies on the leaf rake and I'm going to put in uh, the exact measurement for the long side of the lid and that way I can go ahead and break the small side of the lid first uh, bend those up and then it should fit right inside um, in between the two flanges uh, to do the long side so right here I go to do the first bend and like an idiot I break it the wrong direction so what I'm going to have to do here is anneal that section right there and then uh, flatten it back out and rebend it the right way. I've annealed it and flattened it and I'm going to rebend it and make all four bends. Alright, so I've got a few problems here where I had to rebend that. There is in fact a crack. You can probably see it right there. So I'm going to have to weld that and polish that too. But the other problem is it's pretty sloppy. A lot of movement here. I really uh, kind of messed up there. But I do like the looks of it uh, against the oak. Uh, I think it would look pretty cool. So the fix, I kind of come up with that is I'm going to notch this here on the corners and bend these flanges back a little bit and I'm going to add another break a little bit in and get it to tighten up a little bit and hopefully it'll look even better that way. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and 
weld the crack here. So I've got it welded here and now I'm going to take a Scotch-Brite medium maroon pad and remove the weld so you can't tell that we did anything. I'm marking the corners about 3 16 on each side because that's uh, about the amount of much gap I want to take out all the way around. I'm going to go ahead and remove the waste that I marked with the cutoff wheel. Marking new brake line with the scratch gauge. Scribing a line 45 degrees to remove a little bit of material to allow for the new brake. And removing that line with the cutoff wheel. Then I need to go ahead and bend back the flanges slightly because we're going to add the other brake. So instead of having the 90 degrees right here, we're going to bend this back to about 60 degrees and then add a 30 degree brake, making 90 degrees again. All right, then setting the leaf brake back up again and sticking the material in there and making our second brake. Alright, so I'm liking the looks of this quite a bit better. I'm almost glad I messed up now because that extra bend in there makes it look a lot better. And we got it tightened up on the side, so, you know, not a whole lot of movement. Looks a little bit better. Not looking too bad. Just need to weld the corners and polish those a little bit. And then we will go ahead and take off the color and then we'll uh, put a little patina on there. haven't decided what, what color yet, but uh, we'll uh, do that after we weld these corners. So I'm welding the corners here with deoxidized uh, copper wire, 16th inch thick. For more information on that, I go a little bit more detailed in the Can You Weld Copper video that I have out. And I usually like to weld the tips of the flanges first so it doesn't melt away. And then I flip it over and weld the outside corner. And then I'm going to flip it back over and kind of fuse the inside of the corners uh, so that there's no cracks or crevices. Using the little air grinder again with the maroon Scotch-Brite conditioning disc. I'm going to go ahead and clean up those corners and make that well disappear before we prepare it for the patina. Removing all the color here with the Scotch-Brite hand pad. Spraying a degreaser slash cleaner on the material and continuing to work it in with the Scotch-Brite hand pad and rinsing it off when I'm done. So now I've got it set up on these aluminum blocks. That way I can apply heat underneath it uh, for the patina. I'm going to wipe it off with acetone uh, one time to get a final clean before we uh, apply the torch. So then I'm going to go ahead and apply the torch and get it up to temperature and then start applying by spray bottle with the uh, with a ferric nitrate uh, ferric chloride solution and this gives it a rusty type color and uh, I just kind of keep on applying a little bit and trying to keep it at the right temperature where it just kind of sizzles a little bit and apply a little bit more and more until I until I'm happy with the color that it turns out and then I dip it in water uh, immediately to lock in that color. So now that we got that all there is left to do is to wipe it off with acetone uh, with a rag rubbing pretty aggressively make sure to get any loose um, 
ferric nitrate, ferric chloride off there. And then I'm going to apply a lacquer on there, uh, a satin finish, gloss finish from uh, Peacock Laboratories. So if you enjoyed that video or if you got some value out of it, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, because coming up we're going to be making a homemade forge here in the next few weeks or so. And after we get that done, I'm going to go ahead and make a uh, forged handle for this lid. So once that comes out in the future, I'll be sure to put a link down to that in the description. And be sure to check in the description. There should be a link to the video, Can You Weld Copper? So we'll see you on the next one.